AV in your ears. That amp was being giving you this audio visual down the most interesting street in the world. With my boy Steve, Fascination Street. You already know. Let's get it when you whip in the Fascination Street. What do you Welcome to Fascination Street Podcast, Charlotte Kirk. How you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I am fan freaking tastic. You know, it's not often that I get a nice young lady with a wonderful British accent. It has happened before. I'm thinking of uh, Serena Scott Thomas and her wonderful yeah. accent. Um, but obviously, you're not from around here, which is South Texas. So, where were you born and raised? Where'd you grow up? So, born and raised in the UK, uh, on the outskirts of London. And I actually moved to the States when I was 19. So, you know, I was there for a good 10 years, um, but currently now in the UK. Now, are you back and forth? Like, do you live in two places, LA and the UK, or do you mostly just stay in the UK? You know, it's pretty ironic. When I was living in LA, I was filming a lot in Europe. And now I've kind of rebased myself here in the UK after COVID. I'm filming everything in the States. So it's kind of just backwards and forwards, really. That's Wherever hilarious. the world is. <laughs> a few years ago, my wife was opening um, psychiatric hospitals all over, basically all over America. And the company she was working for was headquartered in Louisville, Kentucky. So we had to move from San Antonio, Texas to Louisville, Kentucky. And as soon as we got to Louisville, they had her five days a week away from me opening a hospital in uh well basically opening three hospitals in texas so we left wow. texas to go to kentucky and then the company sent her to texas <laughs> oh my goodness. that's kind of like what you're doing <laughs> yeah exactly but you know what texas is meant to be a really beautiful place to live like nice lifestyle good weather great food nice people it has all of the things um there's snow in some places mountains in some places we got the beaches here where i am in san antonio during the summer usually it's over 100 degrees uh which is not a good thing <laughs> but you have seasons which is nice <laughs> yeah we Maybe have extreme seasons, but you have them <laughs> we have two of them really we have hot and then everything is frozen and doesn't work for about a month so <laughs> yeah yeah, I still can't get their act together. <laughs> oh, oh, these people. Okay, so we're going to bounce all over the place if you're cool with it. And you're probably drinking tea out of that mug. But here oh, sure. in America, <laughs> do you know what we drink out of those mugs? Coffee. No, that's a, that's a copper mug, right? Yeah. No, we drink only one thing out of those. Oh, with um, Moscow, Moscow Mule? That is correct. Good job. But you job. know, actually, I got this... Uh, from uh, Rudy, Rudy Oso, New Mexico, where I just uh, finished filming. What um, did you just finish filming there? It was an action film with Dolph Lundgren and Michael J. White and myself. It was so, so cool. It was an amazing experience. And uh, yeah, I got this as a little souvenir. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I think I was just reading about that film in an interview that you posted 15 minutes ago on uh, yeah. <laughs> on Instagram. Um, <clears throat> okay, we're going to get to that way later. Maybe never, but just kidding. Um, so like I said, we're going to jump all over the place. I have a few things that I got to address at the top of the show, if you're okay with that. Um, I, I heard you say somewhere that you have both Asperger's and dyslexia. That is correct. I okay, do. cool. I have questions. <laughs> Yes, go ahead. Uh, how has dyslexia hindered your work, your career? I would say the slightly negative of being dyslexic is reading scripts, that I'm quite slow. Um, but the, the, the positive is that I can memorize lines really well. Um, so I think... It, a lot of people with Asperger's, a lot of um, a lot of us on the spectrum have like a very good memory, or we have something. You know, usually what you, we our minds work differently, and um, it's a it's yeah. I could talk about this for hours, but they say um, some you know I don't want to say extraordinary talents, but you know photographic memories or um, there's just lots of things that people on the spectrum are great at, and I think I'm good at memorizing lines. 
Um, but yeah, the bad thing is, is it's kind of frustrating when I've got lots of scripts to read and it's takes you know it takes me some time. Um, so there's a positive and, ne and a negative. But being on the spectrum, I don't know if I if I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change who I am. And if I wasn't who I am, maybe I wouldn't have just got up and packed my bags and gone to the US when I was nineteen. I didn't see the fear. I didn't see the, the you know what was ahead of me. I just went and did it because I thought that's that's what I wanted to do. That was my dream. So I look at it as a positive. Sure. I think that, um, you know, like you said, it's it's a little bit like your, your brain is wired a little bit differently, right? With yeah. the Asperger's and the dyslexia. And I think that that rerouting of whatever wiring is in there, I think that kind of lights up the more creative side of people's brains because the people who... The people who are on, you know, any of those spectrums, whether it's in one, two or three different places, like you have, mm -hmm. I guess, two or whatever. Um, I think that that for whatever reason, the people who I have seen that have sort of those tendencies seem to be way more productive on the creative side, way more imaginative, way more um, free thinking and not not so kind of like you said, you know, like. Maybe if you didn't have that wiring, you would have been like, what? Go all the yeah. way to, to America. Are you crazy? It's insane. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. how my wife and I felt when we went to Paris a few years ago, like 10 years ago. We were like so excited to get to Paris. And once we got there, um, we landed at like Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. And like <laughs> we're in America, we're used to security. You know, we're used to those yeah. security guards walking around in Paris. No. Those dudes are wearing army fatigues, camouflage army fatigues, and they're carrying machine guns. And we were like, what is happening? Wow. And oh we asked God. the taxi driver, like, what's with all the, what's with the military being in the airport? And he was like, oh, no, no, this is the capital. It is secure. We were like, what? Are you like, sure? <laughs> seven days later was the uh, Charlie Hebdo bombing. <laughs> we were like, this is not secure. Get us the hell out of here. <laughs> got out you got out in time yeah it was wow. it was crazy um okay so i asked you about dyslexia now has acting and and the uh, the physical i guess uh, motions of acting helped with your asperger i i totally yes i believe it has How? because when i was a kid i hated school part of that was my dyslexia I I didn't feel like I fit in I, I fitted in anywhere um you know academic maths English was very difficult for me and then the first time I stepped into drama class it was the first thing that made sense to me and I felt that I it was the first thing that I connected to and I thought I was good at and I loved it and if I didn't do this I hope I would I I don't know what I would do. I just I just feel that it's helped it's helped me overcome my autism. I mean autism you always live with it. It's it's a spectrum and it's not something that you grow out of. You always have it, but you learn to deal with it. I think acting is a big part of that. It's part it's the creativity, I guess. It's the freedom that's a lot, you know, that when I am being creative, it's the freedom. Um anything academic, producing writing and stuff I do which I don't really like but I, I do it out of necessity so I can make my own films but um I don't like it at all I I, I just like the creative stuff um again we're gonna go all over the place so you you, you moved to New York City at like 19 and you're only there for like six months and then you were like you know what all the tv and film stuff's happening on the other side of the country so you went to LA right you spent 10 years in LA, but at the beginning, when you first got to LA, you couldn't even, you couldn't even talk on camera, right? Oh, it was very difficult. I mean, obviously I went to drama school here in the UK, um, but it's very different. You know, we were, you know, I was taught in my drama school theatre, I wasn't taught camera. Um, so that, I took some acting classes, but, but I also think that acting helped me come out of my shell as a person. I don't know how, I, 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 it's not, I can't quite put it into words. Maybe it's the drive and the focus. I think having something that I'm super focused and dedicated to, challenging, ch challenging, challenging, no, challenge, 
can't say the word. Challenges. No. Challenge yeah. in the energy. Okay. Where you okay. challenge something. You challenge it in. Focus it in. Sure. Oh, yeah. You're channeling. Challenging. <laughs> See, this is part of my dyslexia, so I get some words. It's sure. Really... No, that makes sense. So, so, that so was a... challenging that, that, that energy into into one thing, into my acting, into something that I'm, I absolutely love. I think that helped. Um, otherwise... I get a little bit disfocused and disorganized and not know where to focus my energy and acting because it was something I really loved and was passionate about. It helped me. It helped me focus on that. Love it. Okay. During COVID, you, much like most of America, maybe the world, I don't know, but you fell in love with a TV show on Netflix. It was called Tiger King. I need you I to tell it. me why you love Tiger King so much. And before you answer, I will say that Carol Baskin is a previous guest of the show, and she's a really, really sweet person, so don't say anything mean about her. <laughs> oh, let, no, you know what? I'm not I'm not here to judge. I mean, who you know, I just loved the characters. I love interesting people, and everyone on that show was No, so I'm gonna stop you right there. Look, we don't say interesting. You love fascinating characters. Sorry. This is fascination no, no. Sorry, Okay, go ahead. Fascinating, but but not dull, mundane, ordinary. It's kind of just meh. I like I like people that are exactly fascinating. <laughs> and, and and just that industry. I mean, it was so I, I love animals. That's like my second passion apart from acting would be anything to do with animals. I mean I I didn't quite, it was a little bit morally, I I had some moral issues with that, with how they, you know, capturing the, the tigers. But, I mean, the fact that he went to prison as well. I mean, the whole thing is just surreal. It was so addictive as well. Like, I was like, oh, next episode, next episode. It, just the whole world. It was like watching a movie. That whole little universe of this tiger industry, I didn't even know existed, to be honest. And and this man who who made a living off that and yeah just just the whole the whole scenario I mean you couldn't make it up you could not write this stuff <laughs> the twists and turns was insane. So what do you think about him running for president a few years ago? Like he this Joe Exotic Joe Maldonado he ran for president. Oh also Joe's lawyer has been on my show too. He's super cool. <laughs> I mean look. <sighs> You do you, right? <laughs> it's like anyone can become president in, in the United States. We've had actors. Clearly. <laughs> you know, so uh, if the people vote for you, I'm not to judge. I'm not a U.S. citizen. So, you know, that's my political answer. <laughs> so Joe was going to be on my show if he got pardoned when Donald Trump was leaving office. Because, you know, there was this rumor going around that Donald Trump was just going to pardon, like, I don't know, a million people as he was walking out the door and Joe thought that he was going to be one of them. And so uh, according to Joe's people, I was on the short list. There was like five or 10 people that were going to get to interview Joe as soon as he got out of prison, if he oh. got pardoned. But oh. <laughs> President oh, Trump didn't do cool. that. <laughs> no, we're not going to. Oh, my God. How long is he in prison for? I have no idea. But the weirdest thing is that he's in prison in Texas. And I don't understand why, because none of that stuff happened in Texas. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, weird. I did. I felt, I felt, I mean, I, it's been a long time since I watched it, so I'd have to refresh my memory, but it kind of felt like he got a long time for something. I don't know. I felt like it was just too long for what he did. Well, I think that what he actually got convicted of was not animal abuse. I think it was um, hiring a hitman to assassinate Carol Baskin. I think that's why he's in. I, I don't remember. I, who knows? And I also, thought who was, sorry, I thought it was. Um, arson you know where he was he set his someone's arson. office yeah when he set an office his office on fire thanks so. oh, well you know what maybe you're right like you said it's so been that's a while. why i was like no if it's if it's if you're about to if you've got a hit on someone or cruelty to animals no that's yeah you get freaking life for that like, you deserve that but i thought it was like something silly like setting an off office on fire because he was trying to destroy documents wow apparently that's a thing that we do over here 
in this country as well as destroy documents. Um, so okay, enough about Tiger King. I just had to bring that up because it was so charming listening to you talk about it uh, on some other interview I heard. You were just like we're like madly in love with this TV show. <laughs> oh, I loved it. All right, yeah. we're gonna talk about things. So you moved back to England after 10 years. Um, oh, how come you say the UK? You don't say England. I'm from the UK. Well, you're from England, but I mean, I guess. I don't know. I think it's just shorter. It's like US instead of United States. How <laughs> dare you? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and this okay. is my baby. My, my baby. My is baby that cup. Molly? Yes. Hi, Molly. Is that a Cavalier King Charles thing is that a thing is that a King yes. Charles Cavalier yes, Spaniel she doesn't look like one right now because she's had she's got a haircut so she looks a little bit like a gremlin seal baby well it's she okay. looks mad at you oh, oh look she God. looked at you when I said it too she's mad at you because you gave her a haircut she's like see he knows no. okay sorry <laughs> no, don't don't apologize um okay so you went back to England after 10 years in America why did you leave it was just after COVID, um, I felt that I'd run my course there. I think a lot, a lot of people were moving out after COVID. Um, everything went up in price, the taxes went up, and I kind of wanted to be with my family during that time, just after COVID, um, and during COVID actually, on the cuffs at the end. Um, that was the main reason, but, you know, I always, I don't like to say I've moved back. It sounds like I'm... You know, I was I was in the US four weeks ago and then I'm going again in two weeks. So, you know, it's like my home home. Gotcha. Now you have several producing companies too, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Did you start producing after you went back to England or were you also producing when you were here? No, I was producing when I was in LA. So being in the States for a, a good 10 years working as an actress and you know I landed some good roles some great roles with Bruce Willis and some studio films Ocean's 8 How to Be Single but I, there was a lot of roles that I really wanted to play and they just weren't there like good scripts are really hard to find good scripts with a female good decent interesting character is, character is even more hard to find so that's when I partnered uh, partnered up with Neil Marshall um, and we we did our first film, The Reckoning. Okay, uh, I'm going to interrupt you. The Reckoning, yeah. was that in released in 2020? Yeah, released during yeah, COVID. Now, um, the Reckoning won 13 awards. Yeah. Um, was that a sign that you were on the right path? I mean, that was your first foray into like yeah. writing and producing, right? Yes, yes, exactly. That 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 film will always have a special place in my heart. I mean, it, it, there was lots of challenges along the way because you know it, I was very green at that time. It was my first film that I co-wrote, starred in, and produced. So there are lots of learning curves. But um, yeah, it came out during COVID. But you know, I think I'm very proud of it. I'm very very proud of that film. You know, it's like a, a lot of my films. It's it's a horror movie on the surface, but it has something to say, and it's got layers, and it's interesting, you know, interesting characters, and it's it's not just a horror movie. You know, it's a period piece. It's England sixteen sixty five during the Great Plague. You know, a, a, a film about the plague that came out during COVID. <laughs> I love that, and you wrote it like two years before COVID, right? Yes, no, we didn't know how crazy is that, and, and you were wearing year, those those crazy masks. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then our next film, The Lair, we shot that. Um, that came out during the whole awful situation in Afghanistan and the evasion there. Um, and our film is about a British fighter pilot um, that gets shot down by insurgents in Afghanistan. And so as we were shooting, filming that, we were watching the that take place. It was pretty surreal. It's like, what are we doing next? It's like, okay, now the the here. layer the layer was more of a commercial success than. Um, than the awaken uh the reckoning right or yeah right? um well, the, reckoning, the reckoning went into cinemas and it, it did well um mm -hmm. i mean considering it was open during covid right. uh the lair was great um and again i think that was just on the after the cuffs of covid but yeah that did really well that was like on amazon top 10 for quite some time so 
again, very, very different. And that was like the first film that I really, I would say, full out did an action role. You know, I had to learn how to fire an AK-47. Never done that before. Never held a gun before. <laughs> and it was, it's kind of a full on action film from start to finish. So um, that was so a fun one. Those two films, uh, The Reckoning and The Lair, you and Neil wrote this before those events transpired in real life, which leads me to this next question. What's going to happen next week in real life? Well, guys, Alex, so, you, well no, well, I mean, in real life, what did you guys write since y'all are writing the future? Yes. Well, our next film that we wrote after that was Duchess and that okay. was about diamonds. Mm -hmm. so and that comes out, that rich. comes out this Friday, August 9th, right? It comes out August 9th. Yeah. I think yes. in like a couple of yeah. few weeks. We're gonna call that this Friday because that's this is gonna come out Monday. The, okay, the, the it's Monday coming out this Friday. This Friday, everyone, August ninth. <laughs> where is it gonna be? VOD and where? Yeah, so Sabana releasing it, VOD and digital, all the usual suspects: Amazon, iTunes, Apple. Um, I was gonna invite you if you were in LA. We're also doing a premiere on the sixth, but if you that if you happen to be there, so sweet. So sweet. Yes. Where so is the premiere? Charles, my publicist, booked a great theatre. One of the theatres in Beverly Hills. Sure. But we got a great. Not? Yeah, we've got some great people coming, and so yeah, it would just be great to see it on the big screen. I never really had a chance to do that much with. I mean, like the Reckoning opened Fantasia, but it was virtual because of COVID. Um, the Lair was great because that opened Fright Fest. That was awesome. But I never really had a chance to do a lot of the festival runs with them because of COVID. So it would be nice to um, you know, physically be in the, you know, in, in the audience, um, in the theatre, amongst an audience watching Duchess. I watched the trailer of that film, um, Duchess, which again uh, comes out this Friday, August 9th, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I, I have a question or a couple of questions specifically about this film, and then we're going to get back to some other weird stuff. But in this film, Duchess, uh, directed by your at the time fiance, mm -hmm. you have at least one sex scene based on the trailer. Was mm -hmm. it weird or uncomfortable to film that with your fiance six feet away, standing next to a camera? <laughs> um, You know what? No, because Philip, the other actor, who's great, Philip Winchester, he's an absolute pro. You know, it's sex scenes are so mechanical. They are not the way we them. <laughs> it's, you know, it's all smoke and mirrors. No, it's it's never like that. It's all okay, action and no, it's just not it's just not that. It wasn't weird at all. It, you know, Neil's a great director and he knows, you know, he's filming, this is what it is. We both it's like myself, like when I'm on set. Yes, I'm the producer, I'm the writer, but when I'm on set, I'm the actress, that's it. And with Neil, it's the same. If, we, if he's doing a sex scene with me or whatever it is. I mean, after Duchess, we did an erotic thriller. There was a lot of sex in that, that he that he was directing, but very, this is what it is. This is Charlotte. Sorry, this is not Charlotte. This is the character. And um, yeah, I think if you're all working with pros and the other actors are, are, are great and supportive, then it's fine. Who was the... Um the woman that's in the trailer um is that stephanie Be beecham yes stephanie beecham yes it's incredible she was so so amazing to work with and um i mean everyone you know stephanie beecham philip winchester sean pertwee um, now sean Holden pertwee's Lee. dad sean pertwee's dad was one of the doctor who's right Yes, 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 he was. And Cole Meaney, oh my God, that was, because he's like obviously a gangster actor legend. So yeah, that a was- a legend for sure. Yeah, so cool working with him. Wow. Okay, in the trailer uh, for Duchess, at one point, uh, the female actress, I, I like we said, we, we agree that that is Stephanie Beecham. Um, she says to your character, and I quote, you don't have to be as good as a man. You have to be- Two times, you have to be twice as ruthless and 10 times a bitch. Do you feel that that describes the film industry in some respects? Like being a woman in the industry, do you think it's harder? Or like, do you I have think, to be 10 times a bitch I, or t twice as good as a dude? I think in any industry, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're climbing the ladder 
and you want to be in the position where a man is, it's tough. It's very, very tough. In a way, you do have to be twice as mentally strong. I mean, Duchess, for example, she a woman's never, most of the time, not going to be as strong as a man. So Duchess, she had to outsmart, outsmart her enemies. Um, I mean... She boxed a bit. She did. She did beat. She did beat up a few guys here and there. But for the most part, it's um, you know, us women, we have other assets, and it's not just our bodies. You know, meaning the physicality of against against a man, it's our our brains. So, I'm excited about this because I think action films today, gangster films, are great. But it's nice to have a woman. I haven't seen that in a in a, in a long time, really. Like a woman boss and that was kind of where the idea came about it's like we want to make a really cool gangster movie but what about if it's a woman boss instead so that's kind of where the idea came about um and um yeah i just think she's such an awesome character like neil likes to write his characters to be not superheroes not you know spies just like normal people in extraordinary circumstances and that's what I think, you know, Scarlet's in here. You know, she's, she's, her journey's pretty cool. I mean, it's really about like a, a rise to power, a woman's rise to power in a, in a man's seedy underground gangster world. Love it. Now, this character's name is Scarlet. Yeah. Which brings me to a question that I started to ask earlier. Do you have two production companies and one of them is called Scarlet? Yes. Scarlet. That's Coincidence? Named it's yeah, not. absolutely. <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, well, one of my favorite films on the inspiration was Gone with the Wind. Gone with the what? Gone with the Wind. This is a film. Gone with the Wind, a classic. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm like what? <laughs> um, and then I just love that name, Scarlet. Anyway, and um, so because Duchess was me and Neil's baby for a long time. We're like, let's call our Scarlet our, our production. Company Scarlet Productions. So, so is Scarlet the production company Scarlet that's with Neil? Correct. Yes. And, and then your my other, other your other company is called what? Primal Empire. And is that with Neil or no, not with Neil? No, no, no. That's with um that's with other partners. So why do you have two different production companies? I mean a lot I mean, of I mean I don't even have one. Possible. So why do you have two? I mean, it's like so one is creative for development, one is for finance, one is for writing. They're all kind of vehicles for different purposes, really, to be honest. Um, will, will there ever be a um, a situation where both of those production companies are involved in the same project? Or do they do, do yeah. completely different things? No, 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 they do. I mean, Compulsion is one of them. Um, it's a project that me and Neil Coro produced uh, and Primal Empire is involved on that one. And that's for set for a 2025 release, right? Yes. Yeah. What's that about? Uh, that is an erotic thriller. Um, so oh, is that the one you were talking about earlier? Yes. Okay. That's the one where we saw a, a, a film on Netflix called 365 Days, which was quite a massive hit. And um, they got like two or three sequels out of it. And um, I was like, hmm, there is a market for this. Like, When's the last time you saw a really good erotic thriller like Basic Instincts, Fatal Attraction, all the all the classics? So um, that's kind of where the idea came from. And then we were lucky enough to cast the girl Anna Marie, a great Polish actress, that was in Three Six Five uh, in this film as well. Really? And, yes. How sweet. Yeah, it's really really cool. And and the interesting thing is. Um, it's not just an erotic thriller. It's, it's of course, it, Neil Marshall puts his stamp on it. There's lots of blood and killing, and it's it's not just a, an erotic thriller. It's a, um, well, you know, it's, it's got that Diallo vibe, the old Italian classic leather glove. No, not leather glove. The, what is it? The the, the black, uh, yeah, black leather gloves with the, with the, I don't want to give too much away, so I have to be careful. <laughs> but anyway, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's about a serial killer in Malta, and these two girls are, the main suspects and um that's what i'm going to tell you for now <laughs> everybody stay tuned yeah. for that that's set for a 2025 release also set to come out in 2025 
It's a movie that you've been working on for, it seems like eight years. You are set to release The Juice 2025. Uh, the Juice, for those who may not know, was the uh, the nickname for Orenthal James Simpson. O.J. Simpson, you're doing an O.J. Simpson movie. Who are you in this film? Are you her? I'm Nicole Brown Simpson, yeah. Oh my gosh, are you okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. That was that was a tough one. So we'd shot so the film is 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 half the film is Nicole and OJ, and the other half of the film is a lawyer um that's kind of telling their story through flashbacks. And this lawyer, um he is a it is based on true events, Douglas McCann, who sued Verizon phone records. Um for Verizon phone records not releasing um, the records that prove OJ, Nicole was still alive when OJ was on his way to the airport, which obviously proves that he didn't do it. Um, and to this How day- How come I've have, never heard that? And to this day, these phone records have never been released. How did you find out? Oh my God, the Ryla director has, has just, he was researching it for a very long time and he met Douglas McCann. And I mean, you, you can- you can um, search search all of this. It's, it's online. Douglas McCann, uh, Dr. Henry Johnson as well. Um, I'll miss so many things. The evidence was tampered with and all these things that were proven, but were never really, not really out there. But again, like I'm not saying that he's innocent or I, I, I'm not taking that stance. I'm just saying what the film is suggesting. You know, it's kind you. Of... Does it say at the beginning based on true events or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you seen the finished film? Is it finished? finished? No, so we've we've shot half of it, and then some stuff happened that we had to stop filming, and then COVID happened, and then the strikes happened. So things. So when I said you've been working on this for a long time, it's been a long time. I know, I know. But mm -hmm. you're you're sure this thing is going to come out in 2025? I hope so. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing many other things. I'm I'm hoping it will, and I'm very proud of that. Um, it's a very challenging role, but let let's see. You know, I've got obviously Fight or Flight coming out in 2025 and Possession of Gladstone Manor as well. So you're going to have to keep talking. Fight or Flight. Oh, that's the one you that you filmed in Rio Doso, right? Fight or, no? or Flight. Exactly. Exactly. With Dolph and Michael J. White. Michael J. White. Um, is that is that another action? I mean, those those two dudes are action oh, yeah. dudes. Is this an action film? Yeah. Are you going to kick some ass? Um, well, I'm kind of like the... It's, it's basically in a nutshell, Dolph is the number one hitman, of course, number one hitman. And he, I have a hit, he has a hit. I have, Someone has put a hit out on me because I witnessed something that I wasn't meant to witness. So he was meant to kill me. He falls in love with me. So we go on the run. Just so uh, you know, that is rule number one about how to be a hitman is to not do that. You're not supposed to fall exactly. in love with your mark. Not fall in love. Exactly. I was his mark and that was that. Um, so then, so then the Michael J. White's got to come in and clean up the mess? There you go. Nice. Nice. <laughs> it is a really fun one. Um, yeah, I'm excited And then about that. you mentioned another movie. I don't know what you said. Something like The Lady Whistledown. What did you say? The what? The, the Possession of Gladstone Manor. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Bridgerton. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me about the possession of Gladstone Matter. It sounds like an upbeat comedy film. Oh no, definitely not. Could be if if it was uh if I had different actors in. No, we've got I mean so Lynn Shay, uh Barbara Crampton, uh Jesse Metcalf, Kaylee Cowan, some some great names, and um that is a straight up ghost horror movie. Is it a period um, piece or is it current day? No, it's current day. Are there it's... cell phones in this movie? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Because most people, when they're watching horror movies, they're like, if they only had a cell phone, all of this could have been solved. <laughs> or the signal. The signal always goes, doesn't it? No, that's, it sure the, does. that's number one. <laughs> yeah, that's why people need to see Verizon, because uh, the signal <laughs> always goes at the most inconvenient times. For a while, my wife and I had two different carriers, because that way, if one of our phones didn't work, the other one would. <laughs> Very smart. Very smart. It's true. You cannot rely. I, I have two phones, always. Always. Okay, so you had, what did you say, two phones? Yeah, I've got my English one and my American one. 
You know, America, we speak English, right? You can just use the same phone. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you do, you know, guys. What do they say? Same language. What, what, what's, the, what's the saying? The English and the Brits, same language, different something. You heard of that saying? Same no, language. We don't we don't talk about y'all like that. Mm. <laughs> You're our cousins. You're our cousins. Come on. Yes. yes. Um <laughs> Okay. Now Seth Rogan, he is a comedy film actor who said a long time ago that the reason he started writing and producing movies is because nobody would hire his goofy ass as an actor unless he wrote and directed himself or whatever. Why did you decide to start writing and producing? I mean, you said earlier that, you know, those roles were hard to come by. Were they impossible to come by or did you just want to make it easier? Did you just want to get behind the camera? What, give me the full scoop. I just think it's so it's so difficult out there. I, I think it doesn't matter how good of an actor you are, how much you try, or, or whatever it is. It's 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 the it's a numbers game, and the numbers are stacked against you. Um, as I, you know, I was working, I was doing some things that you know, okay, but I wasn't at the level or doing things that I wanted to do. Like, but I'm, I guess I'm kind of like a businesswoman as well. Like I kind of, even though I don't really enjoy the producing, I, I don't mind the, I guess I like it in a way, the whole seeing something develop from the beginning, the germ of an idea and then seeing it on the screen. That's absolutely so rewarding. And it really that that that's the main thing that I wasn't, all of these opportunities because I, I guess thinking of it as a producer, like I had all these great stories and these visions, like, oh, wouldn't this be great? And they're not just make they're not making these films. They're not making a film about, you know, the reckoning and films like The Lair and Duchess. So that really was it. Like if if no one was gonna make them, because I these aren't even films that I was like auditioning for. You know, these are very, very film these are these films that I think are very, very different like duchess i i don't see a film that's very similar to that out there like i can't even think of a comparison yeah i got nothing i can't think of one either that's good based on the trailer I, yeah there's i can't i mean yeah. maybe there is one but i don't know what it is no 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 exactly exactly so it's like seeing that overall vision like no i want to need to make this film and I, I want people to see it it's gonna i'm gonna i want to make films that i want to watch and people are going to enjoy and having that in your head and just having to make it, having to do it. Okay. Well, you've made a few films now. Some have come out and a whole bunch are still yet to come out. Have you found that there's a formula for making a movie? No, there isn't. I mean, every film is so different. It doesn't matter what budget it is, who, I mean, it's just so many elements, the genre, where you're filming, tax credit, funding, the overall mechanisms are the same, but every project is so different. And you have to adjust and go with the 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 industry the, the, what what how the industry is at the moment, you know, or at that time. Like right now the 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 market's very tough and the market wants this and it doesn't want this kind of film and it so many, so many different elements. So I'm always learning and um, applying what I learn and pull it into the next film, but I wouldn't say there's a particular formula. Just surround yourself by top people, creative, smart people. And learn I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said that. I heard you say a few times in different interviews, um, quote, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Explain that a little bit. What does that mean? I know you said just now you surround yourself by people who know what the hell they're doing, but dig a little deeper. What does that mean with you know friends and networking and whatnot? Because people just like drag you down. Like I've been with bloodsuckers and like, or people that are just like, oh, I've just, you have people in your life and they're, they're either a positive or a negative impact on your life. Something that then you've got obviously friendships and you've got business relationships. And I think that if you have a lot of people that, you know, I've made, a, I've made, a, you know, a few projects and business things that I've, been involved and things haven't gone well because people didn't know what they were doing and they were just 
you know made it up on the spot and just you know it's it's just bad business you've got to you've got to be with people that are smart smarter than you or where you want to be you know so I think um that's it really you just need to surround yourself by people that you want to be like you know not like be like but be that you have the same intention you know you're on the same path I've noticed that that for like if it's a film creatively or if it's the finance or whatever it is if you're not on if you're not all on the same page and you all want the same thing then it's just not going to work it's hard enough making a movie as it is it's like a miracle when it gets made and then making a great movie is even oof, even more of a miracle so you've got to have it's so difficult you've got to have the right the right people around you earlier at the very very beginning when we were talking about dyslexia and um asperger's you you talked about focus um not so much as it relates to those two, I don't know, syndromes, conditions, whatever they are, um, but more along the lines of in your industry, how important is focus and or determination in your industry? I mean, because like I said, you've got a whole roster of stuff that's just come out, coming out right now, about to come out. Like you have all this stuff going on. How important is focus in your industry? Oh my God, it's everything. If you don't have focus, you, it's just, it's difficult enough as it is. Like any actor, producer, writer, director, entrepreneur, if you don't have laser focus and you live and you breathe this, the chances of you getting to where you want to be is <laughs> zero to none. It's um, It's tough enough as it is, you know. So you have to have the laser focus. It's like people that have backup plans. I get it, but eh, I went to LA and I had no backup plans. I just, if it wasn't going to work, it was going to work. There was no, oh, I'll just, you know, go back home. And no, it was going to work one way or another. What were you, what would you have been if you weren't going to be, a, I know you said you didn't know, but think about it. What, what would you be if you didn't, you're pointing at a dog. Are you pointing at a dog? I told you. You you would be you would be a dog. <laughs> I don't... No, we definitely work with work with animals. Oh really? Like yeah. showing animals, like on the dog show, or <laughs> yeah, like just showing them on Zoom, like this. <laughs> oh, okay, great, great. Glad I could fulfill your lifelong dream. <laughs> yeah, I think that would yeah something to do with animals. Well, what did definitely. your parents do? Like over here in America, sometimes parents have an idea of what they want their kids to be you mm -hmm. know like lawyers want their kids to be lawyers doctors want their kids to be doctors actors don't want their kids to be actors what did your parents have in mind for you or was there a discussion at all I come from very humble beginnings my mom was a home carer and my dad was an electrician um it wasn't really we weren't really a career um motivated family um so I think when they saw me struggle a lot in school they just wanted me to get by and hopefully hold down a normal job I was going to be totally honest with you so yeah I just think that but they're very supportive it's they always say you know you do what makes you happy and they were very supportive about me going to the states um but they never really pushed me to to succeed or to yeah, you know, what do you want to do? You know, they, they never really gave me that. So, how do they feel about your um amazing success? Oh, they're so proud. Yeah, especially my mum, so sweet. It's like everything I post, she shares with all her friends on Facebook, and all this is very cute. It's very very sweet. And now my mum, in her spare time, now she's retired, she's um painting. I think she's an, an extraordinary painter. So I think I kind of get a little bit of my creativity from her as well um yeah it's sweet isn't it when your parents like she said oh you know she lives a little bit vicariously through me it's, it's very lovely I think that's really sweet mm. what does she paint mainly well pretty much abstract oh nice yeah and she's now retired by the uh, beach I mean it's not it's not Santa Monica 
but it's it's like Brighton, which is like stony and cold, and but it's nice oh, for the UK. That sounds lovely. <laughs> it's nice for the UK. That sounds like the <laughs> East Coast beaches. Yes, exactly, definitely, yeah. Oh, fantastic! Yes, um, but they don't have sharks like New Jersey. Where is it, New Jersey? Where they shot jaws? No, Rhode Island. It's everywhere over there. They all got sharks. No Oof. thanks. No Oof. thank you. Um. Oh, real quick, did you really get COVID when you were filming Duchess? Oh yeah, well, it was. And did tough... Neil also? Yeah, it was a disastrous, total nightmare shoot. I mean, like I got COVID, and then they had to close down. Neil got COVID. It was. It was just one of those shoots. <laughs> but. We did it, and it's but yeah, it was it was a tough one. It was, yeah, you know, and that's the thing when you're making a film, you just never know, you know. The, they call it what the movie gods, the movie they gods. Do, they do call it that. I'm gonna <laughs> ask you a question out of left field, as we say over here. A little birdie told me that you are also musically inclined. Is it true that you have released, oh. as far as I can find, two songs? Right, I'm hiding behind my dog now. I am thinking of... Uh, Molly, you take over the interview. <laughs> Eyes in Love and I Got the Feeling Again. I get the feeling again, sorry. You actually missed one. You actually missed one. There's another one? Yes. Oh, what it is. It's the end titles to a, a film. Oh, okay, yeah. That, does with. that count? Does that count? Yeah. That's that's you can't go find that anywhere. At the end that's of the movie. That's his hysteria and something or something. What is it? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead, sing it. Since I can't find that one, go ahead, sing it. It's still on YouTube, but you probably won't find them because I've tried to bury them because they're just oh, so. Oh well, those two that I mentioned are definitely on Spotify. Which brings me to this question. So who's making money off them then? Because I'm certainly not. <laughs> well, it's about to be me. Here's my question. <laughs> and I had no. <clears throat> so every time I find, especially if I find an actor who who has music, I always ask. I have a lot of musicians on the show and I ask them and they always say yes, except one time. But especially when I have an actor, I have a question for you. As long as you're not going to ask me to sing, go ahead. And it's okay if you say no. However, will you sing? No, I'm just kidding. Can I play one of your songs on this episode? You, I, you, I'm not going to make you sit through it and listen to it right here. <laughs> Only but, if I choose the one. Okay, choose the one. Eyes in love. And will you do me a huge, huger favor? Will you introduce that song like you're a DJ on Radio 1? Oh, it would be so much better coming from you. No way. Are you kidding me with that accent? No, no, it's all oh. you. My and... dog is literally looking at me like she's like, what? Okay, what do you well, want then to just say? Tell, tell, her, tell your dog, just look right into Molly's eyes and say, <laughs> and say, this is Charlotte Kirk. And you're about to hear, did you say Eyes in Love? Is that the one you want? Yeah, yeah, this is Charlotte Kirk, and this is my <laughs> hit song, Eyes in Love. Go ahead, and action. I'm Charlotte Kirk, and this is my song, Eyes in Love. Fantastic. Why Those... did that sound very seductive? <laughs> <laughs> this is Charlotte. <laughs> love it. Um, well, I did yeah. say stare into your dog's eyes. I mean, she's literally staring at me right now, so come, come sit on my lap. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Those watching, I'm not going to put that song in the video version. Go check out the audio version of this episode because that song will be there. I promise. <laughs> I'd much <laughs> rather you. I'd much rather you put the trailer to Duchess. Well, I'll do both. I ain't okay. afraid. We'll go out with. Well, you mean in the in the video? I don't know if I'll figure out how to do that. I'll put it in the video. How's that? Is that cool? Yes, definitely. I'll put it in right. Here. Oh, you interrupted me. Okay, Ray. Oh, I'll put sorry. I'll put the the trailer for Duchess right here. Come here. Whatever happens, I got you. I never meant to put you in any danger. 
Someone stabbed me in the back. It's gonna be okay. To really understand where this all started, we have to go back a bit. So this is me. Name's Scarlet. Got some nice moves. That's Rog McNaughton. The future love of my life. Welcome to your new home. You must be Scarlet. Scarlet. Welcome. Tell me who you really are. I deal in diamonds. Diamond trade is dirty and corrupt. That's when I saw the real world. Kill for me. I'm gonna kill all the men that betray me. They will eat you alive. <sighs> Do your worst. It's not enough to be as good as a man. You have to be twice as ruthless. And ten times a bitch. Oi. Nicely done, Duchess. Duchess. She handled that with grace. Real power can never be given. It has to be taken. You've got some balls on you, princess. It's Duchess. Why did you get all weird when I talked about your singing? You got all embarrassed and you like turned purple and what's up? I guess it's the music videos that I'm, I find slightly cheesy. I shot them many years ago and- uh... There's videos? See, I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> and okay, listeners, I'm putting that videos right. Just kidding. I'm not doing that. They're quite, yeah. So who owns um, those songs if they're on Spotify no, and you're, and you're not getting a nickel? Exactly. I don't know why they're on Spotify. And I think they're on, maybe the one, the Stephen Baldwin one is on iTunes. That's, that's the hysteria fun. thing, whatever? Yeah. A million years ago, before I even knew who Stephen Baldwin was, my sister, um, she was in a movie with him. It, it was oh. about it was about bull riders. So there was a guy named Lane Frost who was this, I guess, big time cool bull rider rodeo guy. And um <clears throat> and the movie was called Eight Seconds because that's how long you're supposed to stay on a bull or something. I don't know. But wow. the the guy who played Lane Frost was um oh no. Uh, oh wait. no, Perry, <laughs> uh Luke Perry from 90210, the guy who played Bull. Oh, yeah. So it was him. He was the lead, but then like his best friend or whatever was Stephen Baldwin. And my sister was kind of an extra in that movie or whatever. She had a couple of scenes with those dudes, but it was filmed like here in San Antonio. And that dude before uh, Stephen Baldwin, before he got all married and had kids and all that, and I guess got found religion or whatever, before all of that, he was a rascal. Is all I'm going to say about that gentleman. Nothing bad, I guess. Cheeky he's lad. Oh, he's yes. A he's, lad. he's a cheeky lad for sure. <laughs> Tell me about working with Stephen Baldwin. Oh, it was awesome. Uh, I mean, you bring it was up actually... Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> My son in law. No, no. Um, no. This was actually quite a few years ago when um, it was actually my first kind of leading role. Uh, and I mean, we shot it in Poland in Warsaw in January. It was like minus ten or fifteen degrees in at night, you know, night filming. It was tough, but it was like an amazing experience. Christmas movie. It's like a, it's a proper like slapstick farce. If you like that kind of uh, that kind of vibe, it's 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 it's, it's um it's a cute Christmas comedy, I would say. And it's again, uh, we never said the name of it, but it's called No Panic with a hint of hysteria. Is that right? That's it. It is a film noir comedy, or so I'm to be told. Yep. Interesting. Or as we say here, fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> um, Charlotte, we are 
coming up on our allotted time today. But real quick, I want to tell everybody again, this Friday, August 9th on VOD everywhere is Duchess. It's not the Duchess, right? It's just Duchess. Just Duchess. Just Duchess. Um, it's an action thriller. Charlotte kicks some ass and takes some names. That's what we say here. We say kicking ass and taking names. I don't really know why we take names, but Charlotte kicks ass in this film. Everybody, you just saw the trailer a few minutes ago, if I was able to pull that off. (laughs) Um, So go check it out. It's like I said, everywhere this Friday, August 9th, VOD. You can watch it in the comfort of your living room with all of the popcorn. You don't really have to get up. And again, in 2025, look for the juice with our fingers crossed and also compulsion. Is there anything else coming out in 2025? Fight or flight. <laughs> fight or fight or flight. Fight, fight, fight or flight. Fight or flight. Longer Michael J. White and the possession of Gladstone Manor. And are those going to be VOD as well? Or are they going to be in the theater? Do you have any idea? No idea yet. So no those idea. you're not producing. You're, you're just acting in those, right? Just. Correct. Okay. Just. See, I know. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's very nice just to, be on a film and just be an actress and not have to worry about, oh, oh my God, we're behind. Oh, it's nice just to be able to act. <laughs> Will you tell everybody sure. where they can find you on social media and find out more about all these things? You post all the time and you post from, it seems like a bunch of crazy different locations and you just post all kinds of crazy stuff. So where can people find you and follow you on social media? Instagram, Charlotte Kirk official and Charlotte Kirk official on Facebook as well. One of the things that I like about your Instagram is that whenever you do like a print interview, like earlier today, you posted what looks like the entire interview, like the entire magazine article. It's what it looks like because I I just anyway, I and also you post the link to those things. And I think that's really cool that you post like the print stuff. Nobody does that. That's really cool. Yeah, no, no, like anything like you, you know, uh, do a great interview like today you know, post and I'll, I'd love to share, you know, it's just spreading the word. And so you had an interview earlier that was great. Only you. Only, Only you. me. Only you, Steve. <laughs> Charlotte Kirk. It, before I let you go, is there anything we didn't talk about or I didn't ask you about that you specifically wanted to talk about today? Did we cover the big no, bits? No, you, went, you went there, you, you went there with the, with the song. So I think we covered literally everything, even the song. <laughs> <laughs> i love it um well i don't know if you had a good time or not but next I year when you did. have all these oh wait no i interrupted you go on <laughs> no i did how many times have i laughed no this has been really cool it's it's nice when you you have more of a conversation and banter as opposed to just questions and answers it's this it's, it's the first one it's fun. well then hopefully you will come back next year when you have all these other things coming out and we can dish some more dirt absolutely i love it let's do it thank you for not making me ask that question where everybody says what advice would you give to upcoming no i don't care <laughs> yeah they can go find that That's, elsewhere no, no. no you asked you asked you asked fun interesting interesting questions that are, yeah i'll def- definitely be coming back if you'll have me fascinating, fascinating questions Three, podcast, charlotte kirk Woo! <laughs> august 9 oh now we're warming up <laughs> There it is. Now you're warming up. Now you're ready. And let's start. Welcome to Just Kidding. Charlotte, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day and your hectic playing with your dog Molly schedule to hang out and let us get to know you a little bit better on Fascination Street. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, It has been 100% my pleasure. And you have a great rest of your week. And you. And you. Well, good weekend. Good weekend to you. Thank you. And hey, Congrats on this movie that's coming out this Friday. I'm so excited for you. August 9th, everybody. Check it out. VOD everywhere. It's going to break the internet. Thank you, Charlotte. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.